my pleasure to award the Lux et Veritas Award to Kathy Ann Lantis Turner. My dear, dear friend, Kathy. I'm going to cry, y'all. You you're going to have to deal with me. It, this is really so rich and wonderful to be able to make this presentation to you. When we arrived here, my friends, in the fall of 1964, after having been roommates in our senior year at a little college called Transylvania in central Kentucky, there were people at this school, you won't believe this, uh, who doubted that women whom they admitted at this school would last very long in gainful use of their theological education. Yet here we are. <laughs> I have 52 years of parish ministry and ecumenical ministry, and you have 50 plus years as a chaplain and clinical pastoral education. We showed them, didn't we, Romy? <laughs> I'm so proud of you and everything that you and your wonderful husband have done. In the world of pastoral care, you're a leader and an innovator who helped remake the world of clinical pastoral education. When you became the first woman president of the Association for Clinical Pastoral Education, ACPE, you brought smart, pragmatic changes to the training of spiritual care practitioners for hospitals and other settings. You made sure CPE is truly hospitable, immersive form of ministry that reflects deeper values of inclusivity. Arriving here at YDS as a student, you plan to be a social worker, but your experiences uh, here as a hospital chaplain and working with Ed Dobahal and people in crisis and transition clarified your vocation. You soon pursued the field of training spiritual care professionals. Life's adventures enriched your contributions. You married fellow YDS student Greg Turner, and together you moved to Brussels, where you had two sons and founded a counseling support center. In Belgium, you also taught pastoral care at a Catholic seminary, a rarity for a Protestant clergywoman in those days. <laughs> and when you and Greg returned to the United States, you continued the chaplaincy path and completed your clinical educator certification. You stepped in as an interim parish minister. In Oregon, you did hospital chaplain work and oversaw a pastoral counseling center. In 1992, you were elected the first woman to be president of the International Council on Pastoral Care and Counseling. In so-called retirement, you got busy again, taking interim positions in various Seattle hospitals, assisting CPE programs, you went to Hawaii once, you lucky thing, and ensuring high professional standards once again. Trey, uh, Trace Hawthorne, CEO of ACPE, says, you have not simply been a pioneer of women's leadership and spiritual care. You have helped transform the way organizations are governed paving the way for women in leadership. He also says, your intellect, courage, wisdom, and compassion make you an alumna that YDS can be very proud to call one of its own. The Lux at Veritas Award is, is given for excellence and distinction in applying the compassion of Christ to the diverse needs of the human condition through the wider church, ecumenical organizations, not-for-profit groups, government, or industry, we proudly give the award this year to Kathy Turner. Stop it. 
I forgot was my glasses. <laughs> Thank you. First, I want to say thank you to Nancy Jo, um, longtime roommate, colleague, friend, uh, co-ministry person. We went through a lot together, and I'm just going to mention one or two of them. Um, one is uh, we did a trip to Europe together using the book Europe on $5 a day. Uh, that sounds impossible now. It was nearly impossible then. <laughs> we, we stayed in hostels. We thumbed rides with trucks and, other, and car drivers, and we ate very light. <laughs> we shared a lot together. I remember how I was right behind you. We've shared that we've talked about this story. Uh, when you uh, marched into Ray Wood Registrar's office, in our sophomore year, our first year or second year? My second year, okay. And um, she was going to challenge the YDS policy that we had just learned, that if you were a female student and got married to a male student, there was no more financial aid for you. And if that's not bad enough, the, person, the student you were marrying would have his aid cut under the assumption that his wife would now be supporting him for his education. You were great, and I was right there behind you, <laughs> quietly supporting you as you articulated so clearly and convincingly the absurdity and injustice of that policy. And that incident was certainly a remarkable indicator of the strong leader and advocate that you were to become, or continue to be, that earned you the William Sloan Coffin Award very recently here. Thank you again. Okay. Now my two minutes start. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of rough following a couple preachers. I am not a preacher. Receiving this award seems a long, long way from my beginning as a student here. I first arrived at the campus uh, during my Christmas vacation, my senior year in college. Having applied, I thought I'd better come and see what the place was. The first thing I did was visit the registrar's office and I introduced myself as a prospective student. And Mrs. Marston immediately said, you have to meet with someone tonight and I will set it up. And she did. I had a meeting with Professor Miller, Randy Miller, and he told me that I had in that very day been considered by the admissions committee and they had put my application aside because they were, they were divided on whether I should be accepted or not. It was a very long interview slash discussion with Randy. And a couple weeks later, I got my letter of acceptance. <laughs> And I have long carried the suspicion that I really didn't belong here, but I had talked my way into this <laughs> venerable place. I have a second powerful recollection, and that is of the opening worship service my first year. The dean, who was presiding, stated that he wanted to welcome all the men who were here to study theology and the women who were here to find a husband. I was stunned. Was it a joke? I don't remember anyone laughed, and it certainly didn't feel funny to me. In the end, five years later, I left the school feeling I had outfoxed the expectations. <laughs> it was not an either or, I had accomplished both. <laughs> On the more positive side of the Dean's welcoming speech, he said he knew that many of us had come here to get our religious or faith questions answered and declared that that was not what this place was about or would do. The school was about teaching us how to know what the important questions were. And I think that set me on the right path for my investigation and study. 
coming up to this 50th year anniversary of my graduation, which I can't really believe, I thought about what were the most significant and lasting aspects that I took away from my time and study here. The first one has to be the blessing of having had Dr. Ed Dobahal as a teacher in a course at the hospital. I had come to IDS with a very real sense that I had a call to ministry, but I had no clear idea of how that might be lived out, because it seemed to me at the time my options were pretty limited. The course in hospital ministry I took with Ed down at Yale New Haven Hospital was a transformative one for me. It provided clarity and conviction about my call and future. Ed and the patients that I visited ordained me into ministry. They told me I could do it. At first, I focused in my chaplaincy on a ministry uh, on end-of-life issues, the feelings and dynamics of folks in that situation. And you may not believe this, but at that time in the hospital, no one was dying. They were either getting better or they were dead. There was no honesty uh, with patients or their families. So much was going unaddressed, unspoken. After that, I began to do some training, further training to become a clinical pastoral educator, thinking, grandiosity, that I could provide a experience and an education for people studying for the parish ministry that they needed to learn what YDS was not teaching, how to be human and relate. They came with all the theology, but they didn't have the compassion yet developed or understood it, the, what it meant. The three themes I identified from my time at YDS are not exclusive to me and my experience, but they are nonetheless core to my faith development and my ministry. They're not even new concepts, but in the context of my engagement of the challenging courses and discussion, they took on deep meaning for me. Number one, faith is a journey, not a destination. Number two, scripture is not a bunch of old stories, but new encounters. And nowadays that sounds kind of trite, but at that time it was pretty profound for me. The third one was that spiritual care is not techniques, but the invitation to a relationship that can produce deeper, richer understanding and integration of one's faith and experience and person. My years of ministry with patients, both with physical or mental illnesses, uh, with their families, with staff and the institutions, with seniors, with prisoners, and with students, accompanying them at times of crisis and transition have been spiritually challenging as well as very rewarding. And together, as together, we searched for sources of strength and healing, for hope and growth. The teaching dimension kept me scrambling at times for additional learning as the students kept coming from fresh from seminary, full of new language and new trends in theology and vocabulary. Living out my call to ministry as chaplain and clinical pastoral educator and a part of the governance of the Association for Clinical Pastoral Education, these have been my passion, my nemesis, my honor, and my challenge. My focus has been that of helping to reshape the pedagogical style, one that is deeply personal, intense, and intimate, and its content into a more accepting and informed, gender-appropriate, effective educational experience. I have definitely been stretched and expanded my knowledge and my own spiritual awareness and perspective as I engage with students exploring and seeking to find integration and healing of person and ministry around such issues as gender identity, racial bias, ethnicity, faith tradition, and lots of other diverse perspectives. My years of ministry have been, along with times of frustration and sadness, times of experiencing grace and helping to midwife such experiences of grace and transformation for my students, who in turn, I hope, will have the potential to facilitate similar experiences 
for their parishioners and patients. To know oneself and to help another to do so, to witness the breaking open of the heart and the breaking in of love and grace, to listen to and learn from the living human document is sacred work indeed. And I have been blessed to have such a ministry. Greg, my other significant takeaway from YDS, <laughs> Greg and I were fortunate to live in a variety of places and to travel extensively with our ministries, both in the U.S. and abroad. We have shared the raising of our two sons and now enjoy time with our three granddaughters. Our lives have been full and richly blessed. And now, newly experiencing my final retirement after several failed attempts, I have begun to learn how to hit that little white ball around while I'm taking a very long walk. <laughs> In closing, let me say again a thank you uh, for this moment of recognition from YDS. I receive it not only as a recognition of me and my ministry, but as a significant affirmation by the Divinity School of the value of clinical pastoral education and chaplaincy as another sacred pathway of ministerial education and ministry with and to others. Thank you.